Welcome back to Startup Grind. Just in case you're tuning in or just in case it's your first time coming here, it's a beautiful event where we have our guest every other month and we talk about entrepreneurship. If you've never been here, welcome and join our community of entrepreneurs. And today we have Adija Jibri, or Jabi rather, from Jibri Business Solution. And she's going to be sharing with us her story about agribusiness, agriculture, and everything that she's doing. Vitu vingi na visuri ambavo na vifanya. Not only Iringa, not only Tanzania, lakini pia tanje Africa. Vitu vingi ambavo na vifanya. Karibu sana Hadija. Asante. Mambo. Poa. How are you? I'm good. Za safari, poe na safari? Asante. I know you traveled far and long. So mbali sana. You think, right? 500 kilometers. 500 kilometers. Anyway, um, who is Adija? Adija ni nani? Amenzia wapi? Um, Hadija ni mtuto wa kike. Jamani mi mwanamki. <laughs> <laughs> Nimezaliwa tale tisa, mwezi wa tisa, mwaka elfu moja, mia tisa, tisini, sa tisa, usiku wa jumapili. Namba tisa ni nambaki ya bahati. <laughs> Kwenye tatu mzuka, tatu mzuka. Kwenye tisa. <laughs> Okay, nilizaliwa Songea. Uh, baba yangu alikuwa anafanya kazi, bado anafanya kazi TCL. Actually alikuwa employed one year before I was born. Mpaka sasa hivi bado ameajiriwa, so he is a government servant. Mamangu alikuwa anafanya biashara ndogo ndogo. Uh, mamangu ni mchaga, machame. And I Nikiwa na miaka mitatu ndo nilianza shule, I went to St. Camillus Nursery School, ilikuwa shule ya, ya, ya Roman Catholic. Then nikiwa na miaka sita, back then ilikuwa kuanza shule mpaka ushike sikio, you can imagine how tall I am. I think I was a bit smart, sio sasa hivi lakini back then. Kwa nikiwa na, na miaka sita, waka kubali nianze darasa la kwanza. Nilienda shule ya, nikuwa nasoma shule moja naitua majengo, sasa hivi wanaita songea. I studied there for three years. Mwaka elfu moja mia tisa tisina nane, babangu alikuwa meamishwa, tukahama, kumfata tunduru. Uh, nikaenda nikaendelea na shule moja naitua mungano, primary school. Nikamaliza pale elimi ya msingi, nikafaulu kuenda shule ya day ya selekali lakini wazazi wangu wakakubaliana kwamba i should go to a boarding school and it has to be a private school so i went to ilima secondary school i studied there for four years i'm grateful to god nikafaulu kwenda tena shule ya ya, ya, ya selekali so i went to mwakaleli high school in bear kwa walio toka mwakaleli wanajua watu wanakutafuta banki <laughs> not me <laughs> No, Saizi Bangi ni, ni biashara kubwa. Naso Mara. Na ESA na, oh really? Naso Mara, yeah. Okay, the so, was. so nikamaliza from six pale, then uh, na mshukuru mungu ni kafaulu, lakini ni, back then TCU ilikuwa hai, hai regulate selection processes za university, so you are supposed to apply directly to the university of your choice. Nelituma application, Nzumbe University, University of Dar es Salaam, na Al the University. Unfortunately, I was not selected to go to any of these three universities. And actually, that was the best lesson kwangu, kwa sababu nejifunza kwamba, um, unezo kafanya vizuri, lakini kama wakati wako ujafika, ujafika tu. Uh, it happened wakati wa second selection nikachagulwa kwenye vile vyo vyote vitatu nilivyo apply uh, nilitaka kwenda mzumbe actually but something happened with the mzumbe university so i could not go there na actually watu wako wana 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 wanatuambia kwamba mzumbe is one of the most difficult universities in the country ukienda pale uta disco kwa hiyo you better find another university and i Unajua wale watu ambao tunatukua tunashawishika kiraisi. Yani mtu wakiku mislidi, unaelewa and you just do that. Kwa hiyo I went to St. Augustine University kusoma Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting. 
I stayed there toka mwaka 2009 mpaka mwaka 2012. I think it's a lot it's, about me, right? It is, it is. Yeah. Now, umenyelezea bashing and business in the county. Now unaanza you dealing with agri business. Mm -hmm. Ni kwamba ulikuja kufanya vitu vingine baadaye ukasema inabidi nifanye kilimo au what gave you the motivation and inspiration of sema unajua nini? Hebu ngo ningeko ni kilimo au jasiri ya mali. Okay with ujasiri ya mali nilianza small businesses in Damlef lakini kwenye upande wa kilimo specifically honestly I never thought that a day will come when I will just go into farming na ni kwa sababu nikiwa mdogo babangu ameajiriwa na alikuwa anapenda kusema kwamba the moment atakapo retire it's when he will consider going back to the village and start farming lakini pia my mom was, was one of those moms ambao kama unataka kwenda shule anakukalisha like four or five hours anaanza kukupa lecture about men about life about everything you see kwa hiyo moja kati ya verses zambazo alikuwa anapenda kuzisema ni kwamba if you want to do well in school utaishia kuwa mkulima so you better do well in your studies ili usiwe mkulima shule nilioenda form 1 mpaka form 4 ilikuwa ina mchepuo wa kilimo but so bad ilikuwa ukifanya kosa ambalo you, 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 you have to be punished watakwambia wata ufanye kitu ambacho somehow kina relate na kilimo like utoe visiki go and milk the cows au ufanye gardening so for me farming was for old people farming was for failures farming was a punishment lakini pia i think we are all aware kwamba kwenye nchi kama ya kwetu ya Tanzania 80% ya farmers ni wale small scale order farmers ambao wanaishi vijijini uh, and we all understand mazingira ya vijijini ya koje there is nothing fancy about their lifestyles most of them so farming was not on my list of things i wanted to do when i grow up it just happened wakati niko Sure, first year, it's when I started doing things in a professional way. Nikasema nataka nisajili kampuni. Na back then, I was very much inspired by Aliko Dangote. Badu wana inspire mpaka kesho. Kwa hiyo, looking at what he's doing, he's actually into manufacturing. Saiz pia mengia kwenye kilimo. I, I, I somehow wanted siku moja na mimi niwe na kiwanda kikubwa. Kwa hiyo nikawa na, nataka kufanya biashara ya kutengeneza bar soaps hizi na actually I started that business. Mwaka 2013 biashara ikafa. Na ni kwa sababu it, it was very hard kushauri financial kuwa convince financial institutions wa, wa, wanipatie pesa ambayo I was looking for ku expand biashara nilikuwa natafuta dola laki moja. back then it was like 150 million had no collaterals i remember nilipoenda bank credit of uh, credit office uh, yule loan officer wakati naongea naye akaanza kucheka yani like are you serious you're looking for this money looking at me the way short i am with a business plan kitabu kikubwa hivi trying to explain how we are going to make millions of money kama akiamini tu on that idea na wakanipatia pesa but financial institutions don't work on that way they don't just finance ideas wanataka waone you have collaterals real things no na kwa hiyo it didn't work then I took all that I had nika kwenye ile yani mimi ni kama tu nikaua ile biashara ya sabuni kachukua whatever that I was left with nikaanzisha microfinance I did that for a year lakini one morning nikaamka siku moja asubuhi nikasema I'm not going to do it anymore and it happened kwa sababu uh tulikuwa nakopesha wanawake siku moja mtu wangu anaedai madeni kaenda kwenye nyumba ya mama mmoja mwanza kuchukua pesa ambayo i mean kuchukua zile makochi zake za ndani na vitu vingine kwa sababu hakuweza kulipa mkopo on time uh, i was also there with him kumbe maskini ule mama mtoto wake alikuwa anaumwa ana yani kwenye stage za mwisho na hospitali wameamua kumrudisha nyumbani kwamba nenda tu akaugulie nyumbani and it happened now we are forcing her to pay that money no na and i felt like i'm supposed to help these people i should not be pushing them 
kwa namna ile i said this business is not making me happy and there is no way i'm going to do it anymore because the next morning i said i'm out of it and that for me if something is not making me money it's not making me happy it's not making me grow i don't do it in our face of fear sio biggest component mostly it's my happiness feeling good about it uh with kilimo i got married very early nikiwa chuo first year sasa i met with someone ambaye ni mkuria we all understand wakulia ni wafugaji right sasa it happened that man was always talking about kilimo ikifika kipindi watu wanakaribia kulima ana tunashauriana actually yeye ndo anajaribu kushauri kwamba let's take whatever that we have tumtafute mtu ambaye analima labda tulime mpunga maid and for me i was like what's wrong with this man kitu ambacho we can just go to a shop and buy tuangaike miezi mitatu miezi sita kulima what's for lakini sema ndoa ikiwa changa you just do what he sells kila alichokuambia ufanye you just do it yani ile unajua lakini mkishazoeana 5 years 10 years you can argue now you are like no i don't do it you see kwa hiyo it happened uh, alikutana pia na mtu siku moja akamwambia bari ya vitunguu akaja nyumbani na mimi pia kaniambia and i said okay fine let's do it we invested a lot of money kwenye 35 acres which is how much close to 60 close million, to 60 million. Yeah. Lakini unfortunately we lost like 45 million. Tulikuwa tuko Mwanza, mmeongo alikuwa yeye yuko Geita, mimi niko Mwanza, alafu shamba liko Ruambuyuni, karibu na Iringa. Kwa we are just doing phone farming. Mtu anasimamia tumemweka pale unapiga simu unauliza vipi shamba linaendeleaje? Back then hamna WhatsApp kwa hiyo anapiga picha anatuma kwenye email. And pictures we are looking so good. <laughs> My dream car is Grand Jeep Cherokee and I thought that was the year <laughs> nanunua ile gari. Yeah, uh tulipopoteza zile pesa zote, I told my husband that my dear hata kama ndoa changa, we should not be talking about farming anymore. This thing doesn't work. Okay. Lakini Uh, siku moja I was watching TV kipindi kimoja kilikuwa kinaitwa amka badilika sio kama tumewahi kukiona kilikuwa cha msimba i think kilikuwa tbc something like that walikuwa wanaita watu ambao wana, wana, wanafanya kilimo labda hot kacha wana green houses au wanafuga samaki au miti alafu they, they tell their stories na unajua story nyingi huwa wanaeleza how good the business is you see na they will put up numbers zile ambazo kama una damu ya kichaga kidogo lazima uwe inspired <laughs> no kwa hiyo baada ya kuona kile kipindi i said i'm going into it again mwangu alikuja uh, weekend yeye alikuwa anaishi geita kwa weekend ilofuatia alivyokuja nikamwambia kuna kipindi we need to watch pamoja ili nisipate sasa shida ya kumweleza kwamba let's go into it again wakati mimi ndo nilikuwa mtu ambaye nimesema we should not talk about it again kwa hiyo yeye pia alivyoona akawa uh, akapenda those figures but this time nikasema if i have to do it lazima ni rectify yale makosa ya nyuma ambayo tuliyafanya kwenye vitunguu kwa hiyo let me take time to learn about it Uh, kile kipindi kilikuwa kina I mean msimbe yuko hapa da na ofisi zake ziko hapa poster so nikatoka Mwanza nikaja I came here like two times to talk to him asking him so many questions lakini pia nikamuuliza kama wana training yoyote ambayo wanafanya kwenye hayo mambo ya hot culture akaniambia wao kama uh, I think it was a company wana huwa wana, wanafanya trainings nika attend kama training tatu siko zinafanyika akemi pale za uh, mambo ya kilimo then i said i have to visit other people ambao kweli wanafanya ni sishe tu wale ambao wameonyeshwa kwenye tv i visited like 12 farms na kuna shamba moja ambalo i went more than 15 times yani ile unaenda mpaka wanahisi kuna vitu unataka uibe labda au you see that lakini the intention was to learn to understand it before we go into it Uh, it happened wakati huo sasa 
biashara ya microfinance ime 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 imekufa ile ya sabuni nayo haina mweleke imekufa na yenyewe tumeshindwa ku finance i decided kwamba let me try to travel go and meet other people ambao wanafanya biashara wakati na hizo idea za za kufanya kilimo sasa and i went to moshi i came here and i went to iringa iringa nilikuwa na rafiki zangu wawili mmoja we just met on facebook mwingine nilisoma kitabu chake i told them hey i will come to visit you and see what you are doing kwa wakati nime, nimeenda iringa i was surprised kwamba kule land was very cheap actually nilikuwa nauliza eka moja ya, ya land ni shilingi mtu anakuambia it's 1080 mpaka 100 and i was like this is my hair you know the price of my wig it's 1080 100 and you can just get one acre like it's yours na nilikuwa nauliza do i get it yani like forever i own it okay yeah you buy it for good no no kwa hiyo i said siku ya tatu nikiwa iringa i said i'm going to stay here i'm going to find shamba then i'll start farming na farming ilikuwa ni ile sasa hot catch ambayo tayari nilikuwa nimeshatembelea watu lakini pia nilikuwa nime nimejifunza na i used to to learn a lot about it kwa kupitia youtube kwenye google facebook kulikuwa na pages za watu wengi ambao wana wanaelezea mambo ya kilimo so that is how it started um you actually took me way forward eh unasema kwa ndaka nirudi nyuma lakini nimepeka mbele sana which is good still nadhani wa mwalimu pia ah kuna kitu kimoja ambacho nimekiona ni kwamba when some of your businesses bishas zako zingine zilizokufa au zikuwa nakaibia kufa ukaamua kusema ah kwa nini sikie pembeni anzie nianze kitu kingine kuna watu wengine ambao wanasema you know what ngoa ni kumalia hapa hapa let me just put more water let me put more mbolea kuna hii biashara ili endelee kukua um what is the right time to leave kusema biashara moja kuna biashara nyingine kuna wengine ambao wanasema i'll do three things at once maybe inaweza ikastahili lakini kuna wengine ambao wanasema kama wewe nitupe kabisa huku nianze upya when is the right time to shift actually kwangu kwenye upande wa wa sabuni ni kwa sababu it happened we were in mwanza mwanza vitu vingi vilikuwa vinatoka kenya i mean sabuni dawa nyingi kenya na uganda uh, competition was ilikuwa kubwa uh, kama hauwezi kufanya production kubwa na mwanza ni jirani na kigoma kigoma ya, mwanza nyumba ya kwanza ya pili mtu anatengeneza sabuni zile zile za kigoma nazifamwe zina mawingu mawingu unaona kwa hiyo for us to be able ili tu yani amini ili tu, tuweze kufanya ile biashara we are supposed to, to invest on machines unaona ili tuwe na ile production kubwa at least hata bei kidogo ziwe ziwe chini na tuwe na vitu ambavyo vina quality nzuri kwa hiyo not being able to do that kupata hela ya kununua hizo mashine kama ploda, kata, mixers ika, ikafanya tuone kabisa kwamba okay let's hold on for a while let's try other things na hata ile kwenda kwenye kilimo na kuna biashara nyingine ambayo nilikuwa nafanya ku invest kwenye mashamba ya miti kwamba maybe seven years from that time au 10 years i will have enough money to come back and reinvest kwenye kwenye kiwanda kwa sababu i still believe on manufacturing moja kati ya vitu ambavyo naviamini ni pamoja na manufacturing kwa hiyo with sabun that is what happened lakini with the microfinance the business was not making me happy and i found okay. no reason of doing it while it's not making me happy lakini kuna biashara ambazo yes you can hold on it takes time kuna zile learning phases kwamba it will take you about 3 years or 5 years biashara nyingine even 10 years hauoni faida unaona lakini ukija uki break even ukianza kupata profit unapata faida unaona kwa hiyo kwa, kwa nature it depends na nature ya biashara unafanya maamuzi either hold on into it au na achana nayo kuna vitu vingine it can be muda sio sahihi wa wewe kufanya hicho kitu labda kuna vitu labda vinahitaji influence ya policy zibadilike na vitu vingine vibadilike na support labda ya ya government so with things like those ones you can just hold on baadaye ukaja ukaendelea kufanya lakini sema pia giving up inategemeana na, na mtu mtu mwingine akipigwa tu na na, na na challenge kidogo you just say yeah. oh i can't do it anymore so i think from here we learn a lesson now katika ikipanda ni kwamba do does it give you money does it make sense does it make you happy pick a struggle chagua mwenye kichwa kupambana nacho kama unaona mfuko wako huko chini do it na kama inakusaidia if you're not happy with it then again if you don't have passion with your business 
why are you doing it mbona now i have another question ambayo nilikuwa najiuliza now umehangaika hapa sana hapo katikati kuna vitu vingi umefanya vimefungika na ushajaribu kilimo kafeli pia kuna vitungu na feel like you lost a lot of money you invest 60 million 45 million kapotea now you're engaging into a new business umeenda iringa kuna watu wapi umeona but how did you evaluate e biashara mpya how your new business akusema this will make sense okay sasa so with kilimo as i said tulianza na kujifunza and we took time to learn about it na i learned kwamba kuna vitu vya muhimu ambavyo you should consider before going into it cha kwanza ni masoko so i came here in that to do market research to show kwa tuko tumeamua kwamba we want to do hot culture the question was kama nalima nyanya na muuzia nani anataka nyanya za aina gani anataka lini anataka ziwaje unaona kwa hiyo we came here to do market research and I realized kwamba kuna masoko ya aina nne soko la kwanza unaweza ukalima hiyo ni kwenye kwenye hot culture na according to findings zile ambazo tulizipata unaweza ukalima una target hao watu uh, wa kipato cha chini na middle, in, uh, middle income earners ambao wananua kwenye masoko ya kawaida kama career course, ni buguruni unaona tandale na masoko mengine ya kawaida uh, kacha ya watanzania hatuna tendency ya kununua mboga mboga kwenye supermarkets you know that ni high income earners wachache na middle income earners pia wachache ndio wanaenda kununua vitu kwenye supermarkets because it's not our kacha tunaamini kama mtu anaenda kwenye supermarket ana pesa nyingi sana lakini you better go there and buy other things sio matembele wala mchicha you see uh, kwa hiyo watu wengi unakuta wananunua mboga kwenye haya masoko ya kawaida kwa it's a market which has so many customers lakini changamoto yake kubwa ni kwamba watu wengi ambao wana wanailisha uh, hii local market wenyewe wanategemea mvua. Kwa kuna wakati wa mavuno ambao unakuta market is soko linakuwa lina vitu vingi sana and prices will normally go down. Kwa unakuta kama nyanya labda tenga unaambiwa shilingi 5000 au shilingi hata 1000 still ukipiga zile gharama za wewe kuzalisha tenga moja na kuuza shilingi 5000 it doesn't make sense. Uh, if you if you want to save this market namna pekee ni kulima kile ambacho ni off season na uwe sehemu ambayo labda una una, una source ya maji kwa wakati watu wengine hawalimi wewe unalima and then normally ndo kile kipindi unakuta kisado cha nyanya kinauzwa shilingi 15 na unasema wakulima sasa wananufaika the way uandishi habari wanavyozipotray zile stories you see soko lingine ndio hiyo corporate customers wao ni pale ambapo unalima kwamba una target hizo supermarkets zilizopo unaona kama food lovers laba shoppers na, na nyingine ambazo tunazo na una target laba hotels pia na campsites the good thing about this market they can buy with good prices unakuta utauza kwa kilo utauza uh, kwa kilo ya nyanya laba let's say shilingi 2000 lakini wao wana standards zao they want uh, quality kwa hiyo lazima utatumia mbegu ambazo labda ni hybrids unaona lakini wanataka consistency ukimwambia mtu wa hoteli nitakuletea kila jumamosi mboga it has to be kila jumamosi sio leo unamwambia ujue nilikuwa naleta mboga lakini gari langu limekuwa makitonga unaona kwa hiyo hazitafika leo they they won't understand mtu hawezi akaacha shelves zake ziko wazi because you could not deliver on time lakini kitu kingine uh, wanataka uji present in a very professional way kwa sababu watakwambia tuletee invoices tupe company profile yako unalipa kodi na vitu vingine so it has to be a company it should not be kama wakulima wengi tunavyofanya kwamba it's me it's Adija it's my farm mtalima mtu atakuja atachukua au nitapeleka they want you to present yourself in a professional way na the other market ni agro processors unapolima tu intentionally kwamba mimi na, nataka ni wauzie watu ambao wanaongeza thamani Let's say if I do mananasi nataka ni muuzie Baresa na lima nyanya ni mpe dash industries na watu wengine ambao they add value to, to, to your produce and the last market ambayo tuligundua tuli ipo ni hiyo export market sasa with export market kule prices nzuri zaidi kuliko is markets nyingine zote lakini uh, wenzetu they are very sensitive with food safety so if you want to save this market in a conditions nyingi na certifications nyingi na you have to be very careful with usalama wa chakula. Kwa hiyo while I was making a decision kwamba sasa naanza kilimo nikachagua kwenye hizi 
um, I, I am a soko yote manne, kwa mimi I'm going with corporate customers and knowing what they want, I think ile ndo ikatufanya at least to sipate machungu ambayo wakulima wengi wana wanakutana mm. nayo and that's what made the business profitable. That was one one thing in your market. Kitu kingine ilikuwa yani hapo hapo hiyo ndio point ya kwanza. Kuna evaluation of business plan hiyo. I should have more questions kuna hiyo. Okay. Noma ningi hapo kuna marketing. Maana kile uliangalia vingine vingine ndio hivyo. Yes. Na kipengele cha ambacho au kitu ambacho ya mungu kwamba anacho wewe ni corporate ulengera na corporate customers tena nadhani baadaye ukaondoka ukaingia kwenye nini export marketing what did you leave kwenye corporate uh, as i said kwamba wengi hatuna nature ya kununua vitu kwenye supermarkets ukitaka kuscale up lazima utafute masoko mengi zaidi makubwa zaidi so that was the reason why is there still a vacuum like ni kuna watu ambao wanahitaji sana yes sana? yes wapo okay yeah sema sasa ni pale ambapo utataka ulete tani 30 kila siku za mboga mboga da Mm. No, na kwa hiyo to a certain point tunapotaka kukua zaidi you just need to expand your market pia. Okay, point nyingine. Okay, point nyingine ilikuwa mara ya kwanza tulifeli kwa sababu I was in Mwanza, shamba liko Rwambuyuni, hanasimamia mtu mwingine. They normally say ukimpa meno yako mtu mwingine atafunia atatafunia hata kokoto kwa sababu hana uchungu nayo. <laughs> no, na lakini biashara ni kama mtoto mdogo mtoto akizaliwa how many of us we are mamas here Diana i saw you <laughs> you see mtoto akizaliwa akiwa mdogo mda wote unataka yani hata akimshika baba yake unahisi kama yani hamshiki vizuri yani it's like this man is not you see that eh? una, 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 you, you always want that baby to be here una take care of that baby but what we normally do wa, wa, wafanya biashara wengi mtoto akiwa na miezi miwili unataka umwache akajitegemee me, me mwenyewe kwa we learned kwamba kwenye biashara kilimo is first it's a business like any other business and for business baka ifike stage kwamba nao unaiacha you need to build systems pale ambazo hata kama wewe haupo still the business can operate still mambo yanaweza yakaendelea uh, kufanyika hata kama uko dau uko same so kwenye biashara ya kwanza ile ya vitungu we were doing it, doing it from the phone unajua unapiga tu simu unaambiwa what is going on you don't know you don't understand those things no kwa second time wakati tume, tume nimefanya hiyo decision kwamba sasa sasa hivi naenda kufanya hot culture uh, ilikuwa ni kujaribu kufanya kilimo kama biashara kutengeneza ile mifumo ambayo somehow ita, itafanya biashara ikuwe na ifanikiwe Uh, kitu kingine ilikuwa ni ni utaalamu i don't have a background on on, on, on agriculture nimesoma business administration na sikuwahi kufikiria kwamba siku moja nitaenda kufanya kilimo kwa hiyo mara ya kwanza tumelima vitunguu we just trusted someone ambaye yuko kijijini ana, analima vitunguu uh, siku zote lakini this time i said there is a need of using watu ambao wana hiyo expertise if i want to be successful and i remember The very first agronomist I hired alikuwa ni actually a foreigner in Kenya ambaye ana more than 25 years experience kwenye horticulture and I did that ngasema hata kama tutajibana okay fine we'll pay permit for this person lakini the, the intention was itatupunguzia chances za kupata hasara ile part ya production na kwa tayari ume, ume, you have taken care of it no na kwa hiyo uh, Unaweza usiwe labda na, na, na uwezo wa kumleta mtu kutoka nje lakini now we have so many extension officers we have uh, watu ambao wana experience you go and ask them wengine wanatafuta mtu ambaye labda kwenye that particular crop you want to grow mtu gani ana expertise kwenye hicho na unamtumia yeye na i think uh, as people say kwamba uwezo kufanya kila kitu mwenyewe you just need to use people with the expertise you stay there as a leader mambo mengine yana yanaendelea sorry no many gear popo like uh, you've made me think about a lot of things now ni mwanza kama ulivyosema uko farm vitu vingi wakati tunaingia kule hii na pia ulikuwa unaingia mwenye labda unaingia na partner wako and one of the things about tuna farm mara nyingi kumbuka kuna ingia kuna biashara is really hard kuwa na watu ambao wako dedicated au wanafahamu au wana mapenzi na hiyo kitu ambacho unakipenda wewe vile vile how was it akati unaform your team yako na team yako kwanza na watu wangapi maana naam imagine una eka na eka kama eka ilikuwa laki moja kwa maana kipindi kile so i imagine una watu wengi una watu wangapi lakini pia how do you divide your work mpaka kazi yako imeweza kustahimili mpaka sasa 
Okay, kwenye kwenye upande wa wa team, kwenye upande wa wa watu I had a very bad experience na wafanyakazi. Kuna biashara ambayo sikuizungumzia, we we had a printing press in Mwanza. It is actually a partnership business. Bado ipo inaendelea. Uh, at some point niliombwa niende pale niwe operational manager kwa I was managing like five or six people kiweka na yule mfagiaji back then I was 22 ndo nimetoka shule unajua unasema nimesoma business administration hawa watu wote hawana elimu kama ile ya kwangu mimi umefika of course they had experience than me kwa sababu they have been doing it muda mrefu unaona so somehow I just wanted them to see me no na what I wanted them to take orders. I wanted if I tell you to do this you have to do it that way. Usipofanya, I would just raise my voice. It was like that, you see? And it happened while in frustrate, while in frustrate. Baka siku nikasema I'm not doing it done. Unaona kwa hiyo vitu ambavyo nilijifunza kwenye ile experience, the way you treat people wanna respond in the same way. No. Lakini kwenye upande huu sasa wa farming we are okay kuna challenges hizo za kupata watu ambao ni sahihi but kwa ngapi kwanza kuna team bed sorry you want that question right? I, in fact okay. um, we are 41 people including mm-hmm. me okay. lakini kila week tunapata size ni kama 300 people wanakuja kufanya ile not out growers wafanya kazi wale pickers graders uh, yeah okay. uh, kwa hiyo when we are hiring people tunaangalia vitu vitatu we look at your character competence pamoja na capacity yako unaona lakini kwenye hivi vitu vitatu character is the most important thing vitu vingine unaweza ukamtrain mtu akajifunza akaweza kufanya vizuri so long as tu ni, ni teachable lakini character kama mtu ni complainer kama mtu ni mpishi kama It's, it's very hard kumbadilisha mtu kwenye kitu ambacho amekuwa nacho amezaliwa nacho amekuwa kwenye mazingira hayo so if you look at those three things at least inakusaidia kupata watu ambao they are good sio kila wakati inaenda vizuri wakati mwingine you are you are not getting right people and immediately you have to fix your mistakes ukiona kwamba this does not work you rectify it una, unaendelea kwa hiyo now we are 41 people i'm very happy kwamba tuna watu ambao they are really really committed they know what they are doing wanafanya kazi and i tell them kwamba jibri is not hadija you see mm-hmm. wao ndo jibri i i learned kwamba biashara is about my customers biashara is about my employees biashara is about other partners wale wawe suppliers kama sasa hivi wawe out growers it's not about me because brela ndo niko registered kwamba this is adija and everywhere it's i am me the managing director the face of the company no it's not me it's them and that really works i like this by the way now there's even a reason why nimependa kuna sasa msaidu umependa kujiri kwa sababu gani kwa sababu mtuelezea alipotoka na alipo say hivi na where she's going and i hope hata vitu ambavyo umetajizi competence character unaweza kuwafundisha hata wengine ambao wanakuja kwa sababu i think you're working with different types of people and that is my aim kwamba kuna wale wasoma kidogo kuna wale watu ambao wanafanya marketing na kuna wale wa chini wana pick pick kwa hiyo at least wote wao synchronized mm-hmm. but something else ambao i'm thinking right now 2018 right na niko nasoma research wanasema ndani ya miaka miwili so much data has been used so much data and information has been passed around imagine in a day in number mwenyewe kwa si juma kama najua mwisho bilioni na there's more than a billion unaambia more than 2.5 quintillion data inakuwa na misho every day and now i'm thinking kati yo data zina misho unataka kujua Tanzania tu atumie data gani zaidi should i say that mtaota ni kwa usiku it's so sad kwa um, we use data in the worst way ever Now I'm thinking kwa biashara ambayo unafanya wewe au kwa kazi ambayo unafanya wewe how has data helped you to develop biashara yako mm. information and knowledge kwa dunia ya sasa hivi dunia ambayo ina it, it's moving so fast and yani with technology and everything when you write information ndo ambaye ana, anafanikiwa mm. and we take time to learn what is happening especially kama una compete kwenye soko la dunia yeah. yani wewe unaweza ukaa huko hapa mwenzio mzimbabwe yuko songea 
mwenzio anayepeleka kutoka Egypt yuko Mtwara so if you are not moving fast kama wao wote na ukumbuke kuna Chinese kuna sijui uh, Mexico wote you are all selling at the same market unaona kwa if you are not informed if you don't want to accept mabadiliko pia ya teknolojia you will be left behind so that is very important kwetu na actually kwa 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 upande wetu sisi okay not talking about that I'm talking about technology with whatever that we are doing we are trying to integrate technology with it kwa sababu dunia ya sasa hivi kitu chochote unachokifanya it's just finding a way to do it in a more efficient way kama unataka ku compete kama unataka pia kwenda kwenda haraka zaidi kwao wakati mwingine ukuta safari ya mtu mwingine inayomchukua 10 years it takes you 2 years or 3 years Yeah. Is it a, is it peer a tool ambayo natumia kwa consumers na manufacturers? Tools tunazotumia ziko ziko nyingi. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'll share one thing. Kwa mfano tulivyoanza export market, moja kati ya changamoto ambazo tuko tunakutana nazo ni, ni, ni temperature. Uh, aya mazao yana imetoka mazao yanatoka shambani unaweka kwenye cold truck, unaenda kuweka kwenye cold rooms then baada ya ku process kupaki vizuri utaweka tena kwenye cold truck kuleta dawa ukifika airport kuna cold rooms unaweka kwenye ndege nakaa kwenye vyumba vya baridi paka inafika kwenye warehouse za mteja Ulaya unaona kwa hiyo mtu mmoja tu labda dereva anayetoka na mzigo wa Iringa anakuja da akimesa kuna temperature by the time mzigo unafika kwa mteja umeharibika kwa sababu ni mazao ambayo kwa very sensitive temperature haya ambayo tunayasafirisha and one instance tulimwaga mboga ulaya kumwaga mboga ulaya gharama yake bora wakupandishie kwenye ndege uje upokee upeleke hapo damu kwa kwetu ambako no one will charge you unaona ndiko kibongo ungesema ushirikina na paswa nazi njiani sasa una mboga mboga vipi na kuelewa na mboga mboga zako za kiafrika hapa see so that happened lakini Machangamoto zote ambazo unazipitia una on your business you, you should not be trying to reinvent the wheel tayari kuna watu walishapitia hayo zamani it's just going to them learn from them wamesolve vipi hayo matatizo alafu then you take their solutions and apply kwako kwa hiyo we learned kwamba kuna watu ambao they are just using uh, i mean vi, vi, it's like thermometers unaweka kwenye mzigo wako then i have application kwenye simu yangu pale i monitor mzigo toka unatoka kwenye warehouse i mean kwenye code room yangu iringa mpaka unafika kwa mteja na kuwa naona nao temperature iko hivi dereva akijisahau naambia dereva hapa temperature imeongezeka iko 20 it's supposed to be this mpaka hivi unaona kwa hiyo uh, with if hiyo kujaribu ku integrate technology it's really really helping us wakati tumeanza kabla ya kwenda kwenye export market pia we, we, we got a software kutoka Israel ile yenyewe inatusaidia ku calculate exactly amount of nutrients needed by the soil kwa hiyo somehow ile changamoto ya farm manager kukwambia kwamba nimeweka labda in pk this much au zinahitajika hizi while it's not true you just do the math on your computer and you know what is needed baada ya kuweka zile so it is kwa kwenye vitu vingi sana we are trying to to use technology na unaona kwamba mambo yanakuwa rahisi zaidi una solve so many challenges ambazo labda without the help of technologies or softwares you could not be able to, to, to do it you know what uh, listening to you i have learned so much paka said like you know na kiwaza pricing and i'm thinking kwamba yenye bidhaa zako zinaenda same mbalimbali nchi tofauti tofauti and i think one of the things number you which way into mind kwamba whatever business you're doing There's one thing I'm about you have to think about is pricing. How do I set the right price for my business? Wewe uko na museum Italiano, uko na museum Faransa, uko na museum Zimbabwe, uko na museum mtu wa Arusha. Of course tuna hizo transfer kuna vitu vingi naangalia. But what are the determining factors ambazo naangalia sana sana kwa naika? Cha kwanza kwetu as I said you need to do your homework. Your homework in a way kujua on that country what are the existing prices. Unaona kwa labda mwenzio anauza pound 4 wewe uweze ukasema pound 10 wakati wenzio wote wana, wana range labda kwenye 4 mpaka 5 hapo wanacheza unaona kwa cha kwanza kabisa ni kujua huyo mteja ananunua kwa, kwa watu wengine kwa shilingi ngapi you see ukishajua what are the market prices you come back 
to your business trying to see what are your cost of production how much does it cost you kutengeneza hiyo 1 kg ya mboga then uh is a different location sphere you definitely need to get laba uh, bays and ndege kwenda Ireland ni shingapi labda kwenda Italy ni shingapi alafu then una some of these cost is a production then you are trying to see na bei za sokoni zikoje then you are setting your your prices na ile margin yako wewe how much you want to top up hapo wakati mwingine wateja wengine unajua kuna yule ambaye unaweza kumchaji more power yako ya kunegotiate akakubali bei yako unaona mwingine uh, labda na yeye pia ni ha, hayuko aware na market prices unaona kwa ukamwambia pound 4 akakubali kumbe wewe unaona kwamba hii nimeweka bei ambayo kidogo kwangu inanilipa zaidi kwa base na tofautiana na hizo gharama za kufikia mteja lakini most of the time you also need to look at the market prices kabla ya kuweka bei zako wewe I've realized tumeanza kukimbia kabla kujatembea vizuri there's a question ambayo ndio kuuliza mwanzoni kabisa nikajiuliza kama si kuuliza how many crops are you farming now we have mazao matatu mazao matatu makuu french beans snow peas french beans marage marage machanga Yeah. Sema mama nani anajua? Mama nani? Mama Perez. Yes. Uh-huh. Na nini cha? machanga, we have snow peas and sugar snap lakini tuna export parachichi but hatuna mashamba ya parachichi we are buying it from farmers. Na hata haya mazao ambayo tuna export a very small percentage of it comes from our own farms but we depend on out growers. These are small scale older farmers, we train them, we uh, sign contracts with them. Uh, then we give them agronomic support and we buy their produce we pack and export i see a lot of farmers hapa had a chance to get na watu kadhaa ambao walikuwa naambiwa wanafanya kilimo wanapenda kufanya kilimo aspiring and everything else wao mwambie so far ntatu yani mazao matatu and now kuna wengine ambao wanaanza kufanya like put every egg in their basket kila yai la mbuni la ndege la nani anataka kuwa na same basket Do you think it's appropriate kama ukianza na kitu kimoja just focus on that au labda i don't know then again kila mtu ana uwezo wake kila mtu ana lakini how do you do the business okay kwenye upande wa, wa export market as i said it requires certifications kwa hiyo kama haya mazao manake kila zao liko certified mm-hmm. i mean kuna zile certifications ambazo like a global gap certificate mm. in a list kabisa pale mazao ambayo unataka kuya certify sasa na ile process ya ku certify zao it's a bit It's not that easy you see. Uh, process ni kidogo ndefu. Okay, it's doable, inafanyika, inawezekana. Lakini sasa when you are starting, you just need to select few crops, uweze ku certify yayo mazao. Lakini kwa nature ya biashara ambayo tunafanya as I said, kwa kono temperature is one of uh, ni moja kati ya vitu ambavyo you need to be very careful with. Kwa hiyo unaangalia zao gani ambalo unaweza nikahandle vizuri, ikaweza labda ina shelf life ndefu kidogo ikamfikia mteja bado ikiwa iko vizuri i would like to do mchicha i would like to do sukuma wiki lakini ile handling yake pia unakuta kila zao ina ina ina, ina taratibu zake lakini uh, selecting what you want to to grow inategemeana na wewe una target wateja wa, wa namna gani when we started while we were saving corporate market sisi wenyewe tulikuwa tunalima zaidi ya mazao 15. We are doing broccoli, we are doing cauliflower, zucchini, cucumbers, tomatoes, capsicum, you name it. Unaona? Na ni kwa sababu we had customers ambaye anakuambia let's say labda kuna wakati nilikuwa na supply kwenye campsites, Rua National Park, anakuambia I want you to supply me all the veggies and fruits. Kwa hadi mazao mengine ambayo you can't produce yourself, you just go to the market buy them you pack na yale ambayo unalima wewe umeweza kulima labda hali yao na support then you, you you export kwa hiyo it depends na wewe una target soko gani lakini while you are starting it's best better you focus on on few you learn a lot about it unafanya vizuri uh, alafu then ndio unaendelea kuongeza kadri muda unavyozidi una kwenda kwa sababu I learned pia hata kwa, kwa wenzetu wa kulima mbola bado wanafanya in large scale when you travel you go and see what other people are doing unakuta mtu amefanya maharage for 20 years alianza baba au babu mpaka sasa hizi mjukuu anafanya the same thing na wamefika kwenye ile level ambayo productivity is really high I was surprised 
kwamba mimi kwenye shamba langu kwenye mashamba yetu you get 3.5 tons uh, per acre labda ya maharage lakini ukutana na mtu anafanya 6 tons kwa kwa eka moja sasa ame uh, ame, ame, amewekeza muda wake kujifunza about soils about best varieties magonjwa kwa kafika kwenye ile level ya perfection sema sasa wengi we just do vingi vingi lakini hatufanyi kwa usahii ule ambao una, unatakio. We just do it for the sake of doing it. Okay, fine, you have so many things you are doing. Lakini at the end of the day, ukienda kupima what you are getting out of everything you are doing, unakuta. It's... Mm. So work smarter, so you work too much or work hard, work smarter. Na korosho pia ulima? Oh no. That was a quick answer. Yeah, ni mkuja ya nakaraka. You know what? I'm going to take it back. Sorry picking. for that. Ah, that was a very quick reaction. I will do one day. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a place where almost 115 million madaf. Because maybe they thought you were younger. But you were young. You were young. You were young. Now I'm thinking, because I see you on TV, I hear you, I learn on Google, same on YouTube, I see things, and I feel like uh, in one way or another, maybe you don't want to support. Am I right or am I wrong? In terms of government, laba, uh, laba, uh, non-governmental organizations. organizations. Yeah, we are, we are getting good support from the government, and I think um, um, I'm very happy about it being a woman, being young, doing what we are doing. Kitu ambacho hata mimi mwenyewe mwanzo niko siamini kama naweza kukifanya. Then they take me as a role model kwa watu wengine ambao they aspire to go into it, they want to do it and make it a business. Kwa hiyo the government ministry of agriculture is really supporting me ministry ya vijana. So many people hata wengine wako kwenye uh, ministries ambazo hazusiani na kilimo but they are supporting me and I think them eh? Una train peer vijana? Um, I do that I mm. do that uh, we do trainings kwa kulima wetu kwa wafanya kazi wetu kwa watu wengine ambao wanataka kufanya kilimo we, we do that okay. lakini kwenye upande wa, wa support we are also getting support kutoka kwenye is uh, some other development partners uh, wengine wana Patia grants. Then I'm really grateful for that. There's one thing about you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> now we, we don't even count. count. You see, I was going to say, even if you have to say, unfortunately, <laughs> you see, um, when you want to finance a business, you, you need to sit down with yourself and think, if you have a loan, you can finance a loan. It can be a loan, you can look for an investor, you can find a way to get grants, especially kama kitu ambacho unakifanya, somehow kina impact kwenye community around you. You can find a partner, unaona, bebwa na tushilikiane, tuweke pamoja, wewe kamsini na mimi amsini, it becomes mia moja, we do it together. Kwa sisi, we selected njia ambazo, we, we thought, let's try ya kwanza iwe hii, let's try to look for grants, then how are we going to do it? To train him to moja watu wawili ambao, Sisi wengine, kazi yetu ni kutafuta hizo opportunities. Mimi kazi yangu, as you know, moving around. Kwenye embassies everywhere, unaona huko kwenye opportunities za government everywhere. Then tukipata laba kuna uh, call for proposal, this person yeye ajifunze kuandika hizo proposals. Kwa hiyo, you write every single day, unaona. Na ikimalizika, we go through it pamoja, we send. Unaona, we, we have wrote so many, so many proposals. Kwa unakuta nyingine, unapata support. Nyingine unapewa lile jibla unfortunately. Nyingine ukipewa unfortunately, manake unanza kuangalia wapi tuliposia. How could we make it better, labda ili iweze kuwa financed. Lakini pia, 
uh, kwa upande wetu now we are also trying to to, to find a way hiyo ya, ya investors we are very happy kwamba what we are doing so many people are interested in it ni ile tu kujaribu kucheki mtu ambaye ana vision inayofanana na sisi ili hata kama unamleta mtu baadaye isikuletee shida but I'm a kind of person who believes kwamba instead of owning a hundred shares kwenye kampuni na yotengeneza laki moja I, bet, I better own one percent of shares kwenye kampuni ambo it, it will make me a billionaire kwa hiyo kama mtu anaweza kaja with expertise ile tunayotaka especially now we are into international uh, business tunaona kwa hiyo kuna factors nyingi tunazo ziangalia lakini tunajaribu ku explore hizo different ways za kuweza ku finance biashara na kila moja unaangalia what are the advantages what are the disadvantages so. she talked like a proper business person hapa bonge moja la somo na hapo in fact tumegusia about partners and people ambao wana share vision na wewe so kuna one of the people ambao we interviewed hapa Sarah Brand I remember once said kwamba you know what when you're looking for partners au kama unataka kufanya makubaliano na watu ili mfanye kazi pamoje tunamalizia don't worry kuna mtu ana hasira hapo ah uh, akasema hivi um you have a local partner maybe ni wewe pia I don't know lakini aliweka kama as a condition that you must have make sure kusabu unfortunately I'm going to use this term for lack of better terms use also an international or a person by who has more 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 um, sababu wao wanauza zaidi mm. is it true number you give for food because na maswali mawili ya mwisho yeah sometimes do you have an international partner we are about to engage You're about to do you think your business will be more lucrative it will come i think will go right manake if we have a partner in europe it's easier because we are doing business in europe amen now two last questions about one moja na iganya mara mbili ingine uko mbele kwa mbele la kwanza tell me the benefits tell me the benefits that you going through and the second one i'm about still, still the same question lessons or challenges ambazo umepata au ambazo unazipata paka sasa hivi and i'm sure kwa sababu hearing you right now i'm napata madini mengi so i'm sure umeanza kupata suluhu ya yale matatizo ambayo unapata now the second question i'm about to analyze hapo ni kwamba Imagine this girl by the way this lady um, I know her story to a point kwamba once upon a time I wanted to become a life coach motivational speaker and she wanted to travel the world and I think right now na travel sana na safiri so imagine right now you get paid to talk mnalipo kuongea kama seba hapa you're in a room full of people suppliers venture capitalists angel investors you name it consumers what to kill in a brown black green people of all colors and races <laughs> And hapo you are pitching like two, three minutes you are pitching una baby come do business with me come do business with Tanzania ajerishi za ugani au whatever what will you say you don't swala pili so I go muuliza man no 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 so la kwanza tu ni rais like the benefits and the challenges so la pili ndio hilo unaniambia ndio hawa hapa watu wako kama unaona hivyo sawa zima angalia lakini i want you to make that pitch kwa ngoma okay we look at you one make a pitch kwanza kwenye upande wa let me start with challenges mkulima kutoka kijiji cha kiwele kama mimi if i start telling you about challenges yule anayetamani kwenda kwenye kilimo hataenda <laughs> unaona ziko nyingi sana ziko nyingi sana Uh, kwa upande wetu kwenye biashara ambayo tunafanya iko very much influenced sana una policies na mahusiano ya nchi na nchi kwa kuna kuna vitu vingi vingine vya within your control vingine hauwezi ku control kwa una deal tu na vile ambavyo unaweza ku deal navyo uh, like labda tuna challenge ya ya, ya ya pesa ku expand biashara how are we going kama nilivyoelezea tunafanyaje tuna challenge laba mteja tuliye naye ni complicated tunawezaje kupata wateja wengine by the way we got customers kwenye internet so let's use internet vizuri you might it might make you a millionaire kwa hiyo challenges ziko ziko nyingi lakini uh, to name few ndo kama hizo ambazo and you should not look at them as challenges you just look at them kama vitu ambavyo they should be pushing you kuendelea kufanya zaidi na zaidi kwenye upande wa benefits I think kuna benefits nyingi zaidi ya pesa hata kuwapa tu wengine moyo kwamba okay unaweza ukafanya kilimo it can be a business lakini uh, being at the point kwamba hata 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 nchi was very happy this year tumepokea kamati ya bunge ha excellence vice president was invited to go to the state house kwa kuna vitu vingi sana ambavyo unaona kwamba okay, as a country 
they are happy with what I am doing na watu wengine pia they are happy with what we are doing na wanaendelea kutupush tufanye zaidi na, na, na zaidi kwa kuna benefits nyingi out of pesa uh, kwenye upande wa why kilimo why should someone come and do it in Tanzania ziko sababu nyingi cha kwanza would want people to know kwamba sasa hivi Africa is a hot cake when it comes to food security sisi tuko kwenye position nzuri we have land watu ambao uh, labda you have traveled to different wenzetu yani hata vinchi unakuta kanchi kadogo kama mkoa wa Morogoro and it's the country tudogo tudogo they don't have land sisi huku kwetu 65% of arab land iko africa hiyo 65 percentage kubwa iko kwenye nchi tatu na Tanzania is one of them. We can see when you travel laba kutoka da kwenda songea you can see jeans land ilivyo tu idle unaona. We have good climatic condition. We don't have snows as dondokagi zile barafu. We can farm throughout the year. Pamoja na kwamba we don't have that advanced technology lakini still we can do it with what we have. Kingine it's water. Kuna nchi ambazo they are fighting yani a farmer you need to get a water right to own labda wow no, lakini kwetu you can just access it unaona kuna zile permits zipo lakini still tuna advantages nyingi na market is there kwa sababu to go into business you just need to to ask yourself kwamba wateja wako food you will eat asubuhi mchana na jioni kama dose unaona kwa hiyo the market is there the market being there is one thing lakini pia getting to, to yani ile kupata lile soko getting to know how wateja ni wakina nani ni kitu kingine but still you can get wateja kwa hiyo swala kizush kabla jamalize market na na mimi na mambo mengi sana kichwani um i know this is very subjective na very relative but za ugani nzuri haraka haraka ambao ukisema you know what mimi na sio nataka na roho ya kichaga sio nataka pesa haraka haraka what do i do like the first business first crop okay hata uh, research nyingi zinazofanyika sasa hivi zinaonyesha kwamba vijana wengi wako interested na hot cash kwa sababu it's a quick thing you do it three months unaona you make money na tuko kwenye dunia ya fast 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 food fast wherever kila kitu fast kila zao linafanya vizuri. Akija mtu wa korosho atakwambia korosho is gold. Akija mtu mimi naifanya hot cash I will tell you hot cash is everything. Well, it's just you choosing what you think you can do and do it so well. Unaona kiasi kwamba wateja they just can't avoid you. Msema korosho uh, a few months ago we interviewed somebody Nyuma Fahada wa by the way. I'm sorry to put you on the spot and again baby. <laughs> But he's actually one of the biggest uh, crop farmers up in the country. Okay. Um, and yeah, this guy, a few weeks ago, he got an award. Congratulations. But uh, yeah, I didn't get to be Korosho, no. But Fahad would say Korosho, yes. No, I didn't say that. Uh, you said it. We have, we have the recording. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you very much. We had a great interview. I loved it. It was very, very uh, insightful, very real. And very open and very honest and what i liked most about this interview is the fact that this lady took her time to do a lot of feasibility study market research and understand the business and she failed a couple of times but she got up as a seed you know what they say right um, they put they threw me down they didn't know i'm a seed i i rise i rose and she deals with far, farming and agriculture she rose and this is who she is now this is what she's doing right now Thank you very much, Hadija. Thank you. I'm passionate with what you're doing. Hadija, Asante Sara, there's so much I could say today, but I'm very happy. It's been a very insightful interview and a startup grind. I'm born in Zuri Sana. Every time that we're done with our interview, we give you a little that we have, either Zari from a t shirt or maybe a certificate. She would have been traveling around the world, but she decided to come here and grace us with her presence. By the way, I have a quick question. Say, Marisa, did you buy that Jeep Cherokee that you wanted? Not yet. Now oh, we're investing in the business. Kuna in the beginning, you I want to buy that Jeep. <laughs> you know, I think right now, you smell like money. Uh, for everything you've done. Now I think after that day conversation kuna watu ambao wanataka kujua zaidi tuongee nao kuna some people ambao wameomba tafanya biashara tafanya 
Thank Asante. you. Asante.